A brand new game, coming from also the brand new developer Chris Ellis, is Prison, an arcade adventure for the Atari ST and the Amiga, which challenges the player to escape from a panel colony on a planet deep in space. Sections of an hidden ship have to be found and then assembled before escape is possible. For 8-bit home computers and from Elite Systems comes Storm Warrior that offers hack and slash fantasy combat through caves, ruined cities and inhospitable terrain during the quest to overthrow the Queen of Darkness. Also from Elite Systems, Super Trucks is making its debut with frenetic race action in another scrolling road driving game which puts the player behind the wheel of a souped up truck. Whilst every other developer released their newest games by Christmas, Season 3 Software opted to skip that crazy sales season and pushed a bit forward, their newest shoot'em up Dominator, now scheduled for release during this month of January. Tusker is another title from System 3 that is coming soon, an action-adventure game in where we control an Indiana Jones style of character trying to find what mysteries lies within an African elephant's graveyard. After the release of Ball, Cygnosis is thrilled to bring Aquaventura, featuring fast-moving solids, in another shoot-em-up style of gameplay with 8-way scrolling. A curious thing is that some of the aliens are armless until we start shooting at them, and that's when things start to get crazy. And talking about crazy, Crazy Cars 2 from French developer Titus is also arriving on 16-bit home computers. We race a Ferrari F40 across four American states in pursuit of corrupt police officers that are involved in a stolen car racket. Obviously that they will try to stop us with roadblocks, but we have ways of avoiding those to try and complete our goal. Staying in the racing genre, the coin-op conversion of Wackle Man is also arriving from the masters in the business, Imagine Software and Under Ocean Software's umbrella. It's obviously based on the real 24-hour Le Mans race, in where our only goal is to run around this one circuit, taking out all competition. And staying with games based on real motorized events, from the Spanish developer Made in Spain comes Paris Dakar that tries to replicate the adventurous aspect of the real race with randomly generated stages every time you launch the game. It also introduced a roadbook with instructions to follow if you want to even dream on finishing one of the many stages present. In a time when getting licenses to create video games based on movies was insignificant, there was this British company Ocean Software whose prime directive was the key to sell games is to make them identifiable to the public. So, Ocean tried to secure the rights not only for the most popular movies and TV shows, but also arcade coin-op games. The story of Robocop is slightly different though. Ocean made a huge bet attaining the rights in a very early development stage of the movie itself. After reading the script for Robocop, Gary Bracey, software development manager at Ocean, left a note to commercial director John Woods saying Get this, I think it could be big! And it was! Data East came late to discover that the rights for Robocop were already in the hands of Ocean Software, company with whom they had already done business with in a recent past. Realizing that Robocop would make an amazing coin swallower arcade game and even a pinball machine, Data East had to sub-license the movie rights from Ocean, which they kindly accepted and would base their own versions on. After playing the extremely difficult arcade original, I couldn't wait to play Robocop at home on my Xenex Spectrum. The ads for the home versions were popping out all over the press, coming from the United Kingdom and Spain, and Ocean's logo was, for me, a symbol of quality. It was also quite awesome to see Ocean's logo stamped on the arcade cabinet and the licensing being mentioned in-game, though the conversion to home systems adds their own exclusive content. 
The 8-bit versions were tweaked a bit. While maintaining the arcade coin-op original side-scrolling concept, many things were improved and a lot new stuff was thrown in with such a clever way and to a pretty damn good effect. The first time I tried it on my brand new ZX Spectrum 128K Plus 2A, I was immediately blown away. The very first thing I remember saying was the computer just spoke. It's just like the arcade coin-op game. Serve the public trust. What an incredible moment. Protect the innocent. Uphold the law. So, for the home versions of Robocop, puzzle elements were introduced like this photo fit scene and this hostage situation that would be replicated in the Untouchables from 1989. Also, the 128K Spectrum version is well known for Jonathan Dunn's incredible music that was also available on other home systems like the C64 and the Amstrad CPC. The Game Boy title music was even used in an advertising campaign by the European home appliance company Ariston and in a couple other situations. And on... And Ariston... The greatest 8-bit home computer version is, for me though, the one for the Amstrad CPC. It has the best from both the ZX Spectrum and the C64 games, amazing sound, gorgeous and colorful graphics and is extremely playable. But probably the closest coin-op conversion was the one released in 89 for the Atari ST and the Amiga, compliments of Peter Johnson, being the Amiga game strangely identical. Usually the Amiga takes advantage of its superior sound capabilities, but this time around that simply didn't happen, leaving the feeling that this particular port should have been better than it ended up being. The PC also had its own game, but the CGA one released in Europe was the worst. I recall playing this one at school and comment with friends that my 8-bit ZX Spectrum version was way better. This was a pretty awful attempt that made Data East develop a brand new DOS game exclusive for the US market, and it is, in fact, a pretty decent one with awesome and colorful EGA graphics. Also from Data East came the NES version that is surprisingly the one that less resembles the arcade original developed by Data East themselves. That's really weird, and on top of that, Robocop for the NES is, in my opinion, the worst of them all. And if I tell you that the Game Boy version is one of the best, would you believe me? Graphics are extremely detailed and the music is freaking amazing for an 8-bit handheld. The bad side is that we only have one life to complete the game. A practically impossible mission to accomplish with success. There were a couple other ports available for other systems, the MSX, the Apple II and even the TRS-80 Coco, but none of those really shined enough to grab the spotlight. Don't get me wrong, these weren't bad games, nor good games for that matter, it's something in between. At the arcades, Ghouls and Ghosts, Heavy Unit, Tubin and Mr. Alley were taking all the credits. On the Nintendo Entertainment System, pro wrestling was making the delight of fans and on the Sega Master System, Shinobi was grabbing all the attention and moving up on sales charts. Christmas of 1988 was when Sega and Nintendo tried to conquer Europe with their 8-bit home-based systems by a time when Japan was already looking towards the second generation of their games machines. Japan was always light years away in what video game culture is concerned. The coin-op arcades were respectable places and far more comfortable and well-maintained than on the rest of the world. And that was what popularized the game's console as opposed to the home computer in that country. In Europe, 
a game's console was seen as an expensive toy, whereas by buying a computer, parents would be contributing to their children's education. Now let's take a look at the most iconic adverts from January of 89. By January of 1989, these were the best-selling games. On 8-bit home computers, Aspar GP Master from Dynamic Software, Commando from Elite Systems, Bomb Jack by Elite Systems, Joe Blade 2 by Player Software and Last Ninja 2 by System 3 Software. On 16 bit home computers, Hostages from Infogrames. Manus from DMA Design Outrun from US Gold Nebulous from Houston and Speedball from the Bitmap Brothers.